Ladies and gentlemen, the game of chess is one of the most intense and exhausting physical, mental, and emotional activities that a human being can participate in. Several years ago, there was an article in ESPN that said chess players can lose dozens of pounds during a competitive chess event. So I decided to make it even more extreme. You see, about a week ago, I was at a massive chess festival for kids and I did this. This is the four versus one super soaker chess challenge and it's exactly what it sounds like. I am playing four chess games at the same time with a clock. I only have 15 minutes to play all of those games and Throughout this endeavor, I am getting blasted in the face, in the body, at full force by massive water guns. I'm going to take you through game by game and show you clips of what happened. Let's go. Kind of embarrassing, but none of the kids told me their names and nobody asked me to ask the kids their names. So these kids are boy one, boy two, girl one, girl two. And they go straight down in order. Blue water gun, green water gun, pink water gun, and orange water gun. And this was very, very scary. I opened up with E4. You see, I've got 15 minutes on the clock, right? I want to win as fast as possible, but I gotta, I gotta be a good sport about it, all right? I can't just win every game in four moves and not get blasted with the water guns because then somebody's gonna cry and then I don't wanna be Gotham chess that made children cry at a kid's chess festival. So boy number one opened with uh, E4, E5, which is a very logical and yeah, you know, I wasn't feeling very uh, nice in the beginning, so I played queen to h5. I was just trying to go after, you know, his king and see if he was going to be able to defend himself. Oh, and he did, and he, he basically made me look like a complete idiot, and he already had a better position after, you know, three moves of chess. So, I'm like, uh-oh, this is really bad. Let me slide back and let me just sort of regroup, but he's already got a better position. Remember, I'm going around, I'm playing a move on every board but I'm taking you through this game and my emotions and I'm, and I'm walking and, and, and right around here, I already realized, yeah, look, boy one with the blue water gun, he's just playing good chess. I mean, he's just developing his pieces. He's got two knights. He's following the golden moves. The bishop came outside of the pawn chain and stupid Gotham has his queen out. This is completely wrong, but, but, all right, I've played chess for 20 years. I'll be able to make do with the queen. And here, I did something that I thought was very creative, right? I'm allowing him to take my knight. Normally, that's not a good decision. It's not. And it's actually not even the best decision right now for me. But I'm relying on the inexperience of my opponents, right? I'm relying on the fact that I'm going to attack at all costs. They're going to be distracted going pew, pew, pew. And uh, they're going to be distracted doing things like this. Listen, nobody's ever had a child with a water gun at a chessboard. Of course he was going to knock over some of his pieces. I was just happy he didn't knock over some of his pieces and then get my queen off the board somehow. But he didn't do that. So in this point, I allowed boy number one to open up my king. Normally that's very good. And it's actually very good in this position as well if he then follows up and starts attacking my king. This is actually just a pure fork from boy number one with the blue water gun who's rating is 9,999. It's just a good position. I gotta guard this pawn, otherwise I'm gonna lose my queen. But the idea of me opening the king like this, and this is actually something you can do when you're playing extreme water gun chess and drowning, you can open up your own king like this, put your king in the corner, and then play rook g1. And this was my idea. Same side castling. I gotta be mean to these children, all right? Because in a few years, I'm gonna be the one with the water gun and they're gonna be playing against four people at the same time. And now, unfortunately, this gentleman did not react in the best way. I already have very mean intentions of going over here. He kind of had to anticipate that. He didn't, and he really didn't. And in the span of two moves, in just trying to get to my queen, we see the advantage goes up uh, a, a lot for white. This is instructive, though. Obviously, we're having fun, and we're trying to, you know, play a extreme water gun chess and drown Gotham because Gotham doesn't know how to swim. He knows how to swim a little bit, but you know, not when he's getting blasted in the nose and the ears. And uh, yeah, uh, my opponent went here, which is not, you know, the worst move in the world, but now he probably needed to go over here. 
Now G5, and now actually here, I did something dumb. I actually made a mistake. Like, throughout this event, you know, I was not always playing the best moves. The best move here is queen takes pawn, followed by rook g1 and bishop g5, and I just win. And this is a very common beginner mistake. It's a mistake which is uh, pushing a pawn, attacking something, forgetting what that pawn used to defend. I thought I was just winning and I went here. I lost all my advantage. This was an actual mistake. And it's instructive. My idea was sacrifice, go here, play rook g1, and I win. But that was wrong because after take, take, my opponent can go king h8 and use the knight as a shield, which I totally just in the running around, I just made a huge mistake. If my opponent went king h8 in this position, I'm not mating anybody. I'm not mating anybody anytime soon. And then he's going to bring the queen and he's going to trade the queen and I, pro I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to win this position. I actually made a mistake because, yeah, water gun chess. Uh, luckily, my opponent went here. And sometimes in chess, the difference is 0.4 or checkmate. And yeah, M5 is on the board. I played rook g1, and now my opponent doesn't have enough time. He doesn't have enough time to come back. And that's mate, and that's mate. So two separate checkmate threats. My opponent stops one, but I go here. And at this point, well, you know, I went to checkmate him, and uh, he got revenge on me. <laughs> that was so fast. That's checkmate. I'm gonna run away now. Yes, yes. <laughs> that was so fast. But overall, boy number one was actually shockingly nice. He joined a super soaker challenge and kind of just played chess. He didn't, he barely used the super soaker, which I really appreciated. Because uh, a little while later, I tried to take it from him. More on that later, though. Uh, this was a very fun game. Uh, I started out this game. Uh, this is this is boy number two. Uh, I started out this game guns blazing. I was going to go in. I really wanted to beat at least like one kid in five moves. But then I kind of reconsidered. So I started with E4. And this, this kid was very nice. He was telling me like he watches my videos and stuff. And I was like, that's really sweet. I'm still going to take your soul. But he was very nice. He was uh, He was very sweet. And um, we, we actually played a Vienna. If any of you play the Vienna, you know that the copycat is ruthless. Yeah, I was ruthless with it. I mean, I just straight up went, went queen here. Because again, it's the opening phase. So I don't actually know how strong every kid is. And I can't just assume they're 500. Because that's disrespectful. This kid might be 1700, you know. He played knight f6 though. He blundered. He, he developed his piece and attacked my queen. He'd never really seen an opening like this. And now I have queen g7. And then the poor kid had a choice between two rook moves and he should have went there defending this and two moves in a row now, he made attacking my queen and it's mate on the board. But at this point, as I reached my hand to deliver the checkmate, I got hit in the ear with a water gun. Like, straight in the ear from the other side by girl number two, who we will cover later. She was a demon with the water gun. So I got hit in the ear, I got discombobulated, and then I got back to this board and I played bishop takes f7. And I missed my winning idea. I missed queen takes f7 because I got hit in the face. That is totally what happened in this game. I totally did not feel like being nice. King went up to e7. And then I took the rook with discovered check. And then I went back. And I said, you know what? I can't believe I missed checkmate. But we're going to keep the game going a little bit. Now, lesson for my opponent. Anytime your opponent's queen is brought out early, just like in the previous game, just make sure the queen can't do any damage. So just defend stuff. Just defend. Right? Just defend stuff. It happens. It happens. And then uh, crazy that I missed checkmate because I got hit in the ear with a water gun. That was nuts. Anyway, my opponent took on e4, and, um, you know, I, I, I saw in this position that uh, I think my opponent in this game was a little bit too distracted, was trying to blast me with the water gun, and just has to take a little bit better care of his pieces. It happens, you know, uh, and uh, I, was, I was really messed up at this point already. So, I, you know, I didn't see this. I missed this. I played pawn to d3, and I was like, all right, young man, let's go. Let's see what you got. 
And at this point, I came to my senses. I was like, wait a minute, I'm going to checkmate him. I'm going to checkmate him the next time I get back to the board. And he started a big counterattack, sacrificing his bishop. Now, my best move in this position is to move the king out of the way so he doesn't have a check, at which point I would deliver a mate. But then he finds this sniper of a move, attacking my king, okay? Pawn to g3, and now something in this something very funny happens. I threaten mate, right? And then he went here. And then... He made a second move in a row. And he played the move, queen f7. Yeah, if you're confused, I'm also confused. I have no idea what happened. I just, <laughs> I didn't even know this happened at the time because I was so focused on getting blasted with super soakers. I don't know how this happened. I think maybe like we had a conversation and he just thought it was his mover. I don't know what happened. Maybe he forgot to press the clock and he saw his clock was running and he was like, oh, my clock is running. So then he went here and he pressed the clock. It's actually a great move. And at this point, my young opponent started playing really, really, really well. It's kind of a shame he waited this long in the game to start playing perfectly. It's a shame that he, he, he made a lot of blunders early on because his defensive skills were actually really good. So at this point, I'm like, all right, I know I'm winning. Obviously, I have more pieces. I'm, I'm going to try to get some pieces over here. But now he goes here, right, targeting my queen and getting out the light squared bishop. And... Uh, and I'm trying to checkmate him, but I can't. His king is pretty safe. I, I have a zigzag checkmate here, which I actually miss. I have check, queen here, and check back, which I, di I didn't even see. D did not even begin to cross my mind. Um, so I played rook a4, which, which I thought was logical, trying to bring the rook over here. And like I said, I mean, he played really well. He got all his pieces in. He just didn't have enough pieces. So I brought my rook. And now I... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go rook to e7, but the game ends in a little bit of style uh, with rook g8. And around here, boy number two started getting assistance from boy number one. Like, this was crazy, you know, as if, like, the two moves in a row and the kids having the ability to shoot me with the water guns wasn't good enough. They started colluding, and I tried to get the, I tried to get the gun back from the kid. I, I was like, hey, if you don't want to use it, well, let me just show you. Ah! All right, guys. I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna see it. I don't wanna, just wanna see it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're not even playing anymore. Now, two of my opponents were seated on the other side. And these two girls were so ruthless with the water guns. And unbeknownst to me, one of them ran out of supplies. She blasted all the water from the super soaker just to have a member of chess.com staff secretly slip her another water gun. We got four kids. We got 15 minutes on the clock. We got four super soakers. Now we got five. Five super soakers. And we got kids making as many moves as they want in a row because I can't even track it because I'm dripping water. I mean, this was nuts, all right? This girl had the pink water gun. And she, she got started really early. I mean, move two, she was just... I was like, okay, fine. You're going to run out of supplies. We played an Italian opening, all right? We had a Vienna. Uh, in the first game, we had a, we had a, we had a wayward queen attack, uh, which would, did not go really well. Uh, and in this game, we had, a, we had an Italian, and then I played pawn to c3, and I played the Gioco Piano, which is uh, a very, very old opening, trying to put two pawns in the center. And unfortunately here... I think my young opponent was a little bit too excited to start the game. She put her pawns and knights and bishops out. And then she castled. She was not paying attention to old Gotham. What you're supposed to do here with black, you're supposed to take, relieve the pressure, and before white swarms you with the pawns, you're supposed to give a check. Because now white kind of has to address the check, and then black can decide what they want to do. Frequently they can put a pawn in the center, or they can take the pawn, and that's what they do. But she made a blunder early. And listen, I'm telling you, I am nice to children. But now when there are four of them and they are loaded with water guns, all right? And I only have 15 minutes. I got to take what advantages I can. If I lose a game, they would have thrown me. The deal was, if I lost a game, the kids got to use a water gun that was this big and just soak me with the whole thing. Also, they were allowed to throw me out of the second floor window of the Charlotte Convention Center.
That's what I was told. I don't know if that was true or not, but that's what they told me. We were gonna perform a stunt where I have to fall like 300 feet out of a building. I don't know, so I wanted to take the bishop. She took my pawn on e4, castles, and then she played d5. Now, I'm a barbarian, you know, I understand that in this position I have to play the move en passant, but she's giving me the pawn, it is protected twice, that's counting, right? So we take on d5. I'm trying to keep my queen on the board, very instructive. Under normal circumstances, I probably would trade a queen, like if I'm playing Magnus, I probably trade the queen, because I know he can't beat me without the queen there. But in this case, I want the queen, right? I want to keep the queen on the board because I want to I wanna deliver a checkmate. So I decided to take with my uh, bishop instead. Bishop f5, I develop my bishop to e3, and I develop my knight. And the idea here is I'm going to develop some pieces, and then I'm going to trade, and then we're going to go on the attack. We're going to try to keep about eight, nine minutes on the, uh, on the clock to have enough time to generate the attack while the other games are going on, while all of this blasting is going on. Uh, but the girls, they were ruthless. And when I was in the process of trying to generate this attack, they were letting me have it. So after knight to d2, we traded knights, and I knew right away I need to bring my rooks to the center, I need to control the d-file and the e-file, I need to prevent black from getting into the game. A really good move here for black probably would have been to just pin my bishop, not let me move. But my opponent went e4, which is, a, which is obviously a very natural move, especially for a young player. This is just attacking the knight, it's safe, but it allows me to put my knight into the center of the board, and now my opponent did something that looks clever, but unfortunately backfires. You probably have to trade. I'm also threatening to take the bishop. My opponent goes here, and sometimes in chess it's just bad luck. My opponent thought knight takes bishop, queen takes bishop, because my knight is no longer, right, my, my, my queen is no longer defending my bishop, because the knight is in the way. But unfortunately, I can take the bishop, and now my queen is defending the bishop. So I get the bishop for free, and I'm able to protect my bishop. Yeah, and now this next move was just very mean. This is the top computer move, and I had to do this, and I apologize. I gotta go for this king, all right? Of course, I can trade the knight, and I can try to trade the queen and play and win an endgame, but I had to do this. I had to play bishop to h6. And the idea is very simple. If takes... I get my queen in, and that's checkmate. And I'm able to do this because I'm up material, but I'm not just up material, I'm up very useful material. I'm up material that is swarming the black king, and black can't get over there. That's the most important detail. This is not even hope chess. Sometimes you play move, you're like, oops. You put on like a weird Scandinavian accent, you're like, oops. But that's not what's happening here, because I'm going here next. Like I'm clearing out the way for the queen. So this is not just hope chess. My opponent actually does a good job, plays g6. Gives up the rook, trying to defend, but I'm bringing in the queen. And um, in this position, my opponent should take the bishop. And then in this position, should go queen e5. And what I would do here is I would play knight e7 check. And I'm threatening a mate, can't take with the queen. So you got to take with the knight, at which point I would take the queen, and then we would play from there. But king h8, I swarmed in, and uh, in this position, unfortunately, my opponent stalled a little bit, tried to make sure I didn't checkmate, tried to negotiate a peace offering. But there's checkmate on this board, and oh my god. No, Sue, I want you to defend! Do more! Do more! Do no, more. I don't want to waste it. I don't want to waste it. No, but you can't checkmate it. can't checkmate this you! you! This year. If you can't see, you can't checkmate <laughs> you! I have my helmet. <laughs> Right here. Uh, by way of water gun, but the checkmate had to be delivered. And uh, yeah, that, um, that, that brought things to an end on that board. But the last opponent that I played had like three minutes of highlights. This girl was unstoppable. She was so ruthless with the water gun. Her water gun was replaced. I told you, she had a water gun secretly replaced. Like, I thought her water gun ran dry, 
And all of a sudden it was like, and I was only told after. I was, I had no idea it happened during. You talk about brutal chess.com staff members. I mean, my goodness, my goodness. The, the, the deck was stacked against me. Plus her openings were very, very good. So E4, D6, and she played a Peart's defense. This is how I knew she was probably pretty good. She's playing a very serious opening. She's playing a Peart's, probably knows it as the King's Indian type of setup. And, uh, you know, I knew right away I gotta, I gotta go long. And this is, if you're playing somebody that plays like this and you gotta win, like, no questions asked. Like, if you don't win, the universe blows up. Castle queenside, storm your pawns. That is like a surefire way to at least get into a fight. I don't know about win, but get into a fight. So castles, castles, and um, you know, this girl was ruthless. Oh my God, I'm just gonna like sleep. My, ch my chest thinker uh, face right here. So not only was she playing good moves, she was also she was also using the water gun really effectively, and she was teaming up with the girl next to her. I was like, oh, this is gonna be a long day. This is gonna be a long video. The first shot of the whole thing, she hit me straight in the ear. That's why I put the hood up. I didn't have the hood up to start. I thought, you know what? I'll let the kids blast me. Like, it's good. I was over here. She shot me straight in the ear. I don't know how she got me straight in the ear. I think I have an ear infection to this day from her hitting me in the ear. I might have brain-eating amoeba, all right? Knight c6, well, I have that anyway. f4, bishop g4, and I played knight f3, and like you see, I'm trying to set up some sort of attack. I'm ready to go here. She should keep the bishop here. It, it's not a good decision to trade the bishop. I mean, of course, she's young. I'm not, you know, but I'm just saying, this only helps me because this trade strengthens my center and also opens the G file, which is going to be very useful for me in the future when I attack. At the very least, black should wait for me to go here. At the very least, because then I got to move this pawn again. At the very least. But she took, but she's got a very solid position. And if she's not playing a fully grown adult, She's, she's probably gonna have a great time. If she's gonna play like this, she needed to start a pawn attack a little bit faster. You kind of see I'm already playing h4. A move that would have been very annoying here is knight to h5. Just stopping my attack. If I try to continue attacking, she just builds up the pawns. <clears throat> and if I do something like this, my bishop is dead. Like, what's he doing there? He's stuck. She's gonna go here. <laughs> Oops. So knight to h5, it's a good rule of thumb. You see an opponent attacking you like this, you may want to blockade with the knight. Now, I would accept this as well, but it's not the best move because it weakens your pawns and I can play a move like f5 and I'm very happy. So h4, knight h5, but she went here and, you know, I started, I started going for it. I started giving up the pawn. I'm giving up the pawn in order to open up the h file. Right, right now I'm blocked. So I play h5. She took with the pawn. That's a mistake. <clears throat> and, you know, she took with the pawn. It kind of makes sense but it would have been better to take with a knight again. If she had taken with a knight, I would have played bishop here to try to take the knight. She would have went back. I probably would have brought my queen over. And you can kind of see why you don't want to allow white to have an open G&H file because it just looks really intimidating. It's not winning yet, but it's really close. And that's sort of what I went for here. She took like this and yeah, now I kind of was like, all right, bad news. Doubled H pawn, open G file, still not hopeless but a really tough position to play no matter what level of water gun that you have. King, uh, she played b6. Now I, I brought my queen over. Not even the best move. Would have been better to take right away. But at this point, I'm winning. And here, this young lady, I mean, you talk about a gamer, you talk about a hustler. She started sitting there and not moving. She started sitting there and letting her time tick which is bad manners if you're playing one-to-one, -one, not when you're playing a four-on-one -on -one super soccer challenge. So she, her time is ticking. She's telling all the other people how to, how to blast their gun. I mean, this was crazy. This girl, I'm telling you, she was a beast, all right? Finally, she decided to make a move. She found the only way not to lose. Knight e6, right, knight e6, and I can't checkmate her. So I took the bishop. 
Now I have mate and one no matter what. Anywhere the king moves, I showed up to the board. I swear to you, she moved the bishop to that square. She moved the bishop. On top of getting a full water gun unloaded on me and a second one in her hands and helping other people use their water gun, she tried to put the bishop right there. If she put the bishop right there, this game would have went on at least five more moves. I was like, uh-uh, put that bishop back. She was like, what are you talking about? It was on the G6 square. It was a big, it was a big thing. It was big, it was a big debate we had about the positioning of that bishop. You best believe it was on the G7 square. Finally, I said, hey, you're going to get forfeited if you don't play correctly. I had to call the arbiter. The super soaker arbiter came by and said, RIP, bozo. The bishop is on G6. No, the bishop was there. And yeah, unfortunately, the, the attack broke through and um, I was able to deliver a checkmate on the next move after pawn takes and uh, queen takes G7. But... Not before we got a little bit of this. Let me think. What should I do? I don't know. Oh, right? I know. I'm going to shoot up with this thing. So, all in all, a very, very fun event. I would consider doing more extreme chess challenges. If you have any ideas, leave them in the comments. I've already done hot pepper chess, but I would do another edition on this channel. I've done super soaker chess. I'll do underwater chess. Should I do skydiving chess? I don't know. You tell me. If you enjoyed it, maybe I'll go film some stuff. Anyway, glad to have survived. Glad to have not been blasted by the big super soaker or thrown out of a second floor of the Charlotte Convention Center. I might have lied about that for content. I don't know. But this was a lot of fun. Shout out to all the kids for being good sports and uh, for being hustlers and gamers and uh, making this a whole lot of fun. And, uh, well, you know the drill. Get out of here.